Very happy to present this MIS TLIF case that involves a 72-year-old female with a history of back and leg pain with significant L4-5 spondylolisthesis and foraminal narrowing. You can see on upright films, there's an accentuation of the spondylolisthesis. We decided to offer her a minimal invasive T-lift procedure. We do this case routinely with intraoperative 3D navigation. Now the patient was brought to the operating room. The patient was positioned in prone position. The reference array for the intraoperative 3D navigation was placed into the iliac crest on the left side. We use this navigation routinely for lumbar cases using the iliac crest reference. The patient is then covered with sterile drape. The operating room personnel leaves the operating room and an intraoperative CT scan is obtained that is then loaded into the navigation system for intraoperative navigation. During the scan, everybody leaves the room, which minimizes the exposure of radiation to the operating room staff and to the surgeon. The surgical procedure starts with determination of the exact location of the surgical incision on the left side and on the right side, overlying the trajectory for the pedicle screws. This is accomplished using the intraoperative navigation as shown here in this video. Small skin incisions are made and we then use the navigated pointer to determine the entry point for the pedicle screws. The pedicle screws are then calibrated. The pedicle screws are equipped with reference arrays and are being used as a single unit. There's, as you can see here on these images, there are K-wires that are integrated into the pedicle screws that allow you to insert the K-wire in conjunction with the screw directly into the starting point for the pedicle screw. There's no need for extra drilling or tapping. The screw tips are so aggressive that they then will insert themselves into the bone and the pedicle screws can be advanced very accurately and safely under continuous 3D guidance. You can see here that we identify the entry point of the pedicle. We tap the pedicle screw very gently to insert the K-wire tip into the bone and then start inserting the pedicle screw under continuous watchful observation on the screen to make sure that the ideal trajectory for the screw is maintained. The screw is then disconnected and once all four screws are inserted, we will start with harvesting of the bone graft. The bone graft is then harvested from the iliac crest. We typically use the iliac crest opposite from the side where the reference array has been placed. We use autograft bone from the iliac crest and later also from the facet joint for the fusion. You can see here how we we target the iliac crest using 3D navigation and then we uh, morselize the bone graft once it has been obtained and use that for the fusion later on. Next, we will perform the decompression and placement of the cage. In order to get access to the spine, we place a tubular retractor. We typically use a 21 or 22 millimeter tubular retractor. And the positioning for the retractor is again guided by navigation. We place the tubular retractor in a medial projection overlying the inferior lamina and the medial facet joint. We bring in the microscope. We align the microscope with the tubular retractor is angled medially. We remove the soft tissue. I typically start medially. I palpate for the bone with uh, the suction and then I expose the base of the spinous process and the lamina and the medial aspect of the facet. Here we're removing some superficial osteophytes. The goal is then really to identify the point between the spinous process and the lamina caudally here in the left side where the ligamentum flavum is really situated. And we then start drilling from the ligamentum flavum towards the parse which is located laterally and cranially and we drill a trough through the lamina and once that trough has been completed with the kerosene rongeur we can then remove the inferior articulating process. Now we're looking at the ligamentum flavum and we separate the ligamentum flavum carefully from the underlying dura. At this point we start removing the ligament to expose the dura that will allow us to orient ourselves better inside the spinal canal. Next, we identify the lateral edge of the dura and the L4, L5 disc space. We then also remove 
the superior articulating process and identify the ipsilateral L5 pedicle. That has been done here, and the uh, disc space has been identified and exposed. At this point, then, we angle the tubular retractor towards the contralateral side and sometimes also angle the operating room table away from the surgeon in order to undercut the spinous process and reach the contralateral part of the spinal canal. And that is being done here. We identify the contralateral ligamentum flavum and then drill the bone that is overlying or covering this ligamentum flavum. And the key here is to create a trough inside the bone that then will allow you to drill very safely. The contralateral ligamentum flavum will then protect the dura and with your suction in your left hand provide some additional protection of the exposed dura, but it will allow you then to safely drill the bone and create essentially a dead space behind the ligamentum flavum on the contralateral side that eventually will allow you to remove the ligamentum flavum and achieve the successful contralateral decompression. The contralateral decompression is then confirmed with the navigation pointer as seen on the screenshot. We then complete the contralateral decompression in a cranial and caudal direction by removing the remaining ligamentum flavum and bone fragments using kerosene rongeurs. This is constantly then supplemented by using the ball tip in order to make sure that we have a good contralateral decompression. Once that has been achieved, we will then focus our direction back to the ipsilateral side. The tubular retractor is then turned back and we explore again here the L4, L5 disc space. The disc is incised. And this is constantly then monitored with navigation. Since we don't have fluoroscopy in this particular setup, we remove the disc, we uh, prepare the end plates very carefully for the fusion. We use different types of shavers as you would do with open surgery. We prepare the end plates and then use the morselized bone graft from the facet joint and from the iliac crest to fill the disc space. We use trials for the cage, and then once we have determined the optimal size for the actual cage, we will insert that cage with navigation as shown here, very carefully retracting the drill sac and the nerve root until the cage is fully inserted. If you use an expandable cage, you can then expand it. The cage has now been placed here. Hemostasis is achieved. The tubular retract is then carefully removed. After removal of the tubular retract, an intraoperative CT scan is obtained to confirm placement of all instrumentation and decompression. We then place bilateral rods based on the intraoperative CT measurements. The rods are placed and locked into place a posterolateral fusion can be performed by placing additional bone graft at this point. These films show the pre- and post-operative x-ray with good instrumentation in place. Incision is infiltrated with Marcane. The patient is mobilized the same day of the surgery and being sent to the floor for an overnight stay.